This is me 3D printing in the wilderness. Okay, I know it looks like I'm in a park, but no, trust me, I am completely off the grid here. No, no, I, I see the plug, but this power didn't come from the power grid. It came from a set of solar panels. I had the opportunity this summer to attend a camp for boys and girls, and it was a week long camp. Now, while we were up there, we were, as I said, completely off the grid. There was definitely no cell phone service, and the only power that we had was the power that we provided for ourselves. Now, maybe you're asking, well, why even bring a 3D printer if you're going to be camping for a week? And, I mean, this is me. I'm not going to leave the 3D printers behind for a week if I don't have to. But in addition to that, I wanted to use the 3D printers that I had to provide an activity for the boys and girls at the camp. So how did I get to this point that I even had a 3D printer that I could potentially print off the grid with? Well, did you know that engineers have an engineering process by which they can turn problems into solutions, even if they have no idea what that solution might look like when they start with? I was first introduced to the engineering process when I took Mark Rober's online class as a part of the training for my makerspace. But after I took that course, I wanted to put the engineering process up on my wall. So I looked it up and it turns out that Mark Rober's engineering process is actually really different from the engineering process that anybody else does. The engineering process has been developed by many different people, but I think most famously by NASA. And NASA's engineering process goes a little bit like this. Starting with the problem, you identify it and define what it will mean to have that problem be solved. Then you brainstorm possible solutions, pick one and then prototype it and evaluate your prototype. Having a prototype in your hand is incredibly educational. There are lots of things that you don't think about and don't even realize until you are actually trying to use something that you've made. And a lot of times, after you have that first prototype, you go back to the design process again. And from here, it's a little bit of a loop. Design, prototype, evaluate. Design, prototype, evaluate. And you keep going through this loop until, well, it's not really clear when you break out of this loop. For the most part, what you're looking for is whenever all of the bullet points that you set up in your identify phase that you said a solution will solve these problems, when your prototype solves them, you're done. Take it, present it, sell it, whatever it is that you're doing with that prototype. However, another exit to this loop might be when you kind of look forward and see that the problems that you've discovered in your prototype just aren't worth or are too expensive to solve. And when you get to that point, you, you look at it and you go, yeah, okay, now I see that I would need to do this, that, and that, but I just can't or don't want to. I would call that the not worth it exit. And this one's a lot less satisfying because it means that you basically have to abandon the process that you were trying to solve at the beginning. You just have to go, now nope, that one's not gonna be solved. And a lot of times we are trying to solve problems that really aren't important. For instance, this is actually an arm mounted 3D printer. It's a gauntlet that you can stick your arm into and attach the 3D printer to your arm and walk around while it's 3D printing. Now, why did I do this? Well, it started because I actually got a hold of a Baby Belt 3D printer. Now, the Baby Belt project is a lot of fun, but it's a small 3D printer, small enough that I saw it mounted on my arm in my head. In fact, I thought it would be funny to make a video where it starts with kind of a fight sequence. An enemy shows up, but the fighter is prepared with a baby belt on his arm. He hits a button and it starts spitting out a sword for him. We watch the sword in time lapse. He pulls it out and then the enemy has left from boredom because it took like three days to print the sword. 
Now, the thing is, I never could quite get the baby belt up and running. It was going to require a lot of upgrades that I just didn't have time for, but I had previously worked with the Easy 3D K7 3D printer, and this 3D printer is interesting because it runs on only 12 volts for the whole thing. And I knew that I could get a 12 volt power pack. Originally, I thought maybe I could build it myself. I've seen people build ones like it before. But then I discovered that there is uh, essentially a UPS for 12 volt electronics that you can just plug your electronics into. And I thought, well, that's perfect. The first thing I wanted to do was check to see if the idea would work. My very first prototype was essentially just hooking the battery pack up to the 3D printer, trying to print with it plugged in, which worked, then unplugging it and see what happens. And sure enough, it kept printing. So the idea at that point seemed sound and it was time to go back and design another gauntlet to put this all on, put it all together, and then try printing with it while I was walking around. 3D printing in the car but not while I'm driving because I'm not stupid. And what I discovered from using it in this way, printing it while it's on my arm, while I'm walking around, is that, okay, the Easy 3 K7 is a $100 3D printer. You need to keep your expectations really low. But this particular 3D printer, it's, uh, it's on rails like this. It's a cantilever like this. I was worried that I was going to be swinging the arm around too much while I was moving. And what I discovered was I was swinging the arm around a lot. There was enough wiggle and play in this thing's movement system that there was a noticeable decrease in quality while I was walking around in the 3D prints that I was doing. Now, my goal for this project wasn't necessarily the 3D printer itself, it was the video. I was going to make a silly video for you guys, but at this point, realizing the faults in this and realizing, okay, in order to fix it, I need to stabilize this movement system. Maybe I need to put another movement system on the other side. I need to think about maybe a linear rail here and how do I attach it on here? I need to build a whole frame for this to stabilize it. At this point, everything got a little bit too expensive to continue to pursue. And I was kind of disappointed. I had gotten this far, but I wasn't going to finish the project. Bam! Version 2, baby! Now, version 2 should not exist for a lot of different reasons. Uh, number one... The 3D printer that I was using on the original prototype was starting to have some movement issues. And while I could potentially fix them, I thought as old as this was, I probably should just get another $100 3D printer and just use that for the second prototype. Plus, I discovered that in the first prototype, I designed the gauntlet in a way that it would not sit on the table without building a unique stand for it. So version two, I would build a more flat bottom for that could sit on the stand on its own. That was a good change, but I really was not ready or willing to make any of the stability changes that needed to be made to make this print better. So even though I made version two, I just didn't feel good about making a video for it because I felt like I had not completed the task. Still, I had this silly little project sitting on my desk for the longest time, and I just didn't know what to do with it until summer camp rolled around. For summer camp, this little portable 3D printer that I had made was perfect. Now, I wanted it to be an activity for the kids, not just, ooh, here's a 3D printer. So here was my plan. I brought some clay, the kids could sculpt it, and then I would use my RevoPoint Pop 2 scanner, which worked with my laptop. We would scan the parts in that they sculpted, and then we would scale them down, 3D print them, and make a chess set. The kids would get a little memento of their time at camp and they would get to use a 3D printer to make it happen, which is always exciting for the kids. Once again, I had gone back to the beginning of the engineering process. Problem? I'm going to summer camp. 
I need an activity to get the kids to want to even go. Solution, I have the 3D printer that's portable. Let's come up with a project. Brainstorm a few ideas, come up with this chess set idea, and then plan it out. Of course, the engineering process demands some evaluation. So how did it go? Well, pretty well. The kids really enjoyed the process of sculpting with clay and I was able to use the 3D printer while we were there to print them one piece as a memento of their time at camp. And then I took those models home and I used my other 3D printers to print full sets so that everybody will be able to receive one after camp as just another thing to remember their time at camp with. So I would say overall this project was a success at what I was trying to do. However, I discovered some downsides as well. First of all, the scanner that I have does not work in the sun whatsoever, so I could only do my scanning after the sun went down. Also, I discovered that the UPS that I had chosen for this isn't a battery backup the way that I expected. Basically, the behavior that I discovered is that after I unplug it, I have three hours, whether I am using the 3D printer or not, meaning I couldn't charge it up and then take it to camp and use it. I basically had to use it plugged in all the time and could only unplug it for short trips as I'm moving the setup from one area to another. It made my printer portable, but not really off the grid nearly as much as I was hoping for. Still, overall, I think that this was a success and I'm really excited that I did finally find a use for this fun little project that I made, even though the previous use for it eh, maybe didn't work out. Having a 3D printer at camp got me thinking about how useful a 3D printer would be in that situation. Uh, for instance, the camp stove had a couple of broken knobs, and if I had a 3D printer, not this 3D printer, one that could print more accurately and, and in higher temp filaments, well, I could have made replacement knobs for those camp stoves really easily. I'm thinking like a completely off-the-grid maker wagon, something that I wouldn't be able to use this small battery backup. I need a big power system in there. And I'd want to put a next gen 3D printer in there, one that moves really fast so that we could potentially finish a print on the same charge faster. Of course, I really like the idea of having the scanner and a computer on there. And maybe I could put drawers or shelves in there so that I could have just all kinds of tools for all kinds of making. Hot glue guns or, or even just zip ties would be nice to have there. Put the whole thing on wheels. And yeah, this would be a pretty awesome project. You know, I wonder how much those uh, fancy battery packs cost. Oh, yeah. The battery pack alone cost more than the entire setup that I had at camp, including the laptop and 3D scanner that went with it. So I think I'm gonna hold on to this project, keep it in my back pocket. Who knows, maybe one day I'll get some sponsorship for a project like this. But that's it for this video. I wanna thank you very much for watching and I want to remind you that you are a child of God, so you're special to me. So take care of yourself and if you can, someone else too. I'll see you next time.